happy long Thanksgiving weekend, YouTube. Isn't it lovely? Now Thanksgiving and uh, long weekends in general mean a lot more to me all of a sudden now that I'm back at work. Uh, just so you know, um, the last little while I haven't really had many videos, uh, only really gameplay footage, and it's been kind of hit and miss in between. There's been days where I haven't had much going, because last week I did start my new job. It was a three days of various types of training and then two days of job shadowing on Thursday and Friday and I'm actually the location I got is like 45 minutes out of town so I've got a long drive um, on top of that so life has suddenly bounced back into the real world <laughs> and it's I love it I love the I like I, I like the new job and I like that the fact that I'm you know back in the working world but after doing over half a year of whatever I wanted anytime I wanted staying at home all the time that's what I felt was going to be the biggest uh, shift and change when going back to a, a job, whether it was my old one or a new one or whatever. Um, just getting back to the fact that I have to get up at a certain time and go somewhere for eight hours a day, you know, and do a job. <laughs> and, and I was not wrong in that. It, it, it was definitely an adjustment and stuff. So, so yes, yeah, so that's why uh, this long weekend, just at the end of that first long, really long week, because it was a lo I was out of sorts. I, I don't take change very well. My stomach was nauseous. Uh, the training was 3 to 11, my shift is 10.30 to 6.30, so it was all over the place, all over the city and stuff, so it was just like, it was just a week that was just so crazy, and, and so I'm glad it was over now, and also that it led into a long weekend, so I'd have an extra day to just kind of wrap my head around everything, and then just go back for a short week, kind of knowing what I'm doing now, and, and just kind of settling into whatever this new normal is going to be, so, but anyways... Now, my videos are probably going to be not as rampant as they have been for the past while, just because I'm going to have a lot less time on my hands to to uh, do all the stuff I've normally been doing over the last half a year or more, and um, and then also get around to posting it. So, um, so just so you know, that's why if there isn't as much content on it, especially for the next little while, while I adjust to my new kind of existence. Um, that is why, not because I've given up or anything. So, anyways, this one is my latest comic review. I went to Heroes and got my uh, October issues, and uh, I'm ready to go through them. So, the first one actually came from Dollarama. You know how I found all those Star Wars ones last time for like four bucks each, the big thick ones. Um, last time we were there, I there, there was a bunch more I could have bought outside of Star Wars, but I only bought one, and it is Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, it's a team up called Guardians Assemble. It, this one's broken up into a f number of different stories. Uh, it starts off with the Guardians um, being chased away by uh, some pursuers and Rocket puts the ship into a, a cloak and overdoes it and the ship crashes but the Guardians are bailed out by uh, the Avengers and uh, Rocket's like you guys aren't the Avengers and it's like a bunch of different Avengers you know not the, the most popular kind of ones. And uh, so they help fight off a, a, a ship full of Chitari that were chasing the Guardians. And, uh, and then in the aftermath um, of the cleanup of all that stuff, they find Nebula is on their trail as well. And Gamora has these flashbacks of uh, growing up beside Nebula under the rule of Thanos, her father, her adopted father. And, uh, and how that kind of relates back to this, uh, this adventure that they're undergoing now. And there's some other adventures in there where Star-Lord actually helps Ronan the Accuser uh, kind of deceive the supreme intelligence of the Kree and, and, and go about a course of action that Ronan feels is best in, in repelling a, a pretty big threat to the Kree. And, uh, and then it kind of ends with... Uh, maybe three or four different adventures starring the Pet Avengers and Rocket gets involved with all these animals and they go on these little kind of crusades uh, that are kind of funny and also kind of serious at the same time. So a pretty interesting um, uh, book full of lots of different looks and stuff like that and a few different, uh, you know, different artists and stuff. So, so everything is kind of uh, mixed up and different and varied and stuff, which I, I kind of like for these. It's uh, these these little collections are pretty cool to to go through and, and see all the different uh, different looks and feels and stories that are involved in them. But back to my regular series. Next up is issue one hundred nine of the ongoing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series. So in this one, 
it opens up and Michelangelo's on the couch listening to the news and it's all these pundits uh, weighing in on the inhabitants of Mutant City and are they animals? Are they humans? They're walking around in human clothes, but do they have intelligence? You know, some of them were were, were animals to begin with and just gained humanity through this mu mutant, uh, this mutagen. Like, how smart are they? Uh, you know, should they have rights in this sort of thing? So Michelangelo is just sitting there on the couch going, ugh. So then he's like, I got a great idea. So he gets up and uh, little Lita follows him around and, and uh, they go to visit Donnie. And Mikey's like, Donnie, I got a great idea. I want to start my own radio show. I could have mutant guests on and we could talk about what's going on in Mutant City and what we're all about and the different personalities and the fact that we are thinking, breathing, um, uh, intelligent creatures and not just instinctive animals, you know. Um, so Donnie's like, Mike, that's a great idea. We'll get on board with that. And uh, But first I got to go help Mona uh, fix up the school that she's planning on... on, on uh, on getting open for all the the children of, of mutant city so donnie goes and does that and then they run into some interference from some people that actually live in the school some mutants that live in the school and they're kind of what are you doing on our turf right but then donnie talks him down and says hey i could help you out with you know getting electricity in here and getting some wi-fi and so all of a sudden he's got these other guys on his side and that's going well and uh you know in the end mikey starts up his first radio show and he's like hello i'm a turtle i've never done this before I need a name for my show, so it's just starting to get going, and he's Mikey's being Mike. And then in the meantime, though, just as the issue is ending, we see this kind of shadowy figure spying on all the different turtles, and right as it comes to a close, uh, we see it, this creature reveal itself to Leonardo, and it drops down from the ceiling on him, and he's like this kind of weird octopus-looking mutant, so it kind of leaves on this bit of a cliffhanger here. This one, uh, called... Transformers Beast Wars The Ascending. This was on the main rack at, at the store, like where all the new releases are, but it's actually older. It's from 2007, but I just, I saw, you know, I did like, really like the Beast Wars cartoon and I don't have any Beast Wars comics and this was actually a number one, so I was like, oh, I'll pick it up. But it's actually number one of kind of a, a change in the tone of the series, I guess. So like, uh, as this one opens up, the, um, the Predacons leader, Magmatron, has been... He tried to travel back in time to Earth to awaken a bunch of Predacons uh, to take the fight to the Maximals. And uh, Razor Beast, I think his name is? Razor Beast uh, interfered with Magmatron's plans and kind of sent him off into a temporal space where he's kind of been lost. And uh, so now it's back on Earth all these millions of years ago and we have some Maximals and some Predacons kind of competing and fighting um for the fate of the planet i guess and uh so as the action picks up and they start running into each other and, and fighting and stuff and, and bantering back and forth we see all the while magmatron in this kind of gaseous dreamlike state watching over everything and, and and kind of evaluating everything that's going on between these two forces and uh hinting at something that is larger to come and right at the end of the issue uh some sort of large transformer threat uh rises from the deep and it's called angolmois shokorakt unicron so all i saw was unicron in there and then anytime unicron is involved you know there's going to be trouble so um not that i'm going to continue that series i just uh, like i said that the cover looked interesting. It was a number one Beast Wars I like, so I just wanted to get it to kind of have something in the stable from Beast Wars. Next up, the fourth and final issue in the Transformers Terminator crossover. So as this issue starts up, like right at the end of the last one, Starscream came up to the Terminator and was like, I got a deal for you. So as this one opens up, uh, we're privy to that deal happening and Starscream's like, you know what? I won't harm these humans, Terminator, if we join forces and you help me eradicate Megatron and all my comrades, as well as the Autobots. Um, I just want to rule the planet. I don't want to kill any humans. I just want to rule and I want to get rid of all the other Transformers. So the Terminator's like, acceptable. So then they go on a, a spree of, uh, you know, trying to take down as many 
uh, Cybertronians as they can. And in the meantime, there's a couple things going on. Uh, Optimus Prime is battling Megatron. Um, a few other Autobots, including RC and Bumblebee, are fighting like the Seekers and some Insecticons and stuff like that. So there's all these little engagements going on uh, between Autobot and Decepticon. And at Cyberdyne Systems, Sarah Connor is is trying to get something going on there, but she's being attacked by Ravage, so she's got to try and fend him off. So in the end, uh, everybody kind of comes together in this final battle, and uh, you know, Starscream contributes uh, to destroying some robots. Sarah uh, ends up destroying Soundwave. Optimus Prime uh, continues his battle with Megatron, and in the end, uh, during the fighting, the Terminator unit gets kind of severed. Uh, his legs get severed from the top half of his body, and he's like, I see what I have to do. So he goes up with Starscream into the sky, and then he launches himself down from, from above right into Megatron's chest cavity, and then initiates his self-destruct, so he blows Megatron all to hell and uh, ends the kind of Decepticon threat. So in the aftermath of all this battle, uh, the remaining Decepticons, there's a couple Seekers uh, and stuff like that, uh, end up being like, yeah, no, we're cool. Let's let's just fall in with the Autobots. We're all Cybertronians and let's just be cool and live on Earth um, as best we can. So they kind of fall into line with Optimus Prime and his forces. And uh, in the meantime, Sarah Connor uh, starts working for Skywatch, who birthed Skynet, and she kind of keeps tabs on the Autobots and, and helps them out, uh, uh, or is set to help them out in adjusting to earth life and uh but but just as the the issue is closing we see the interior of skywatch and we see a whole bunch of terminator units coming off an assembly line with megatron's carcass kind of hung from the rafters so it looks like there might be something dubious going on in there so pretty cool i like that's the last issue so i don't know if they're just going to leave it like that or if they're going to eventually come back to it um, and, and continue that on because they definitely left it open. So next up is another Transformers crossover. They've been going crazy with Transformers crossovers. I love it. Like it started when I got the, I don't even like Star Trek, but I thought a Transformers Star Trek crossover would be kind of cool. So I got those and then there was the Transformers Ghostbusters one. And then of course there was the Terminator one. And I think there might be another one or two that I've, I've forgotten about, but that I also have. Um, and for a long time, there's been Transformers G.I. Joe, but that's, that's old school. Um, but now there is another new one, and it is Transformers Back to the Future. So as this story opens up, we have Doc Brown and Marty McFly uh, in the parking lot of that mall or whatever it is, testing out the DeLorean time machine that they've uh, constructed, and they're being chased by those terrorists. So it starts off just like the kind of movie does. And, uh, but in the meantime, it's also the 1980s, right? So a certain band of robot beings have recently awoken. And as this is going down in the parking lot, two of these robots, namely Rumble and Ravage, are spying on these two and, uh, and go, and then they see the car disappear all of a sudden and they go, what the hell was that? So then Rumble port reports back to uh, Megatron and says, dude, these guys just disappeared. And uh, so then they're, they're like measuring what happened in the atmosphere and it's like, oh, it's these particles. They know how to do time travel. So then Megatron's like, we could use that time travel technology to take down the Autobots. So then Megatron kind of tasks Rumble and Ravage with with um, uh, tracking these two humans down and, and stealing their technology and whatever. So in the meantime, the Autobots get wind of this and Bumblebee intervenes. And uh, and there's kind of this kind of skirmish that, that keeps um, Doc and, 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 and Marty safe. But uh, Doc does warp away to the future, and and events continue continue to unravel. And at, at the end of the night, Marty goes home, crawls into bed, falls immediately asleep because he's gassed from all these strange occurrences. And when he wakes up in the morning, his dad's waking up and says, Marty, we got to go. Let's go. Come on. We're going to get in trouble. So then he pulls Marty out of the house, and uh, everything's different. Uh, he finds out that him and his family and his friends and everybody in their community is working for the Decepticons who are ruling over them with an iron whip and uh, basically treating these humans as slaves as they produce Energon uh, for the Decepticon cause. And overseeing this all as their human kind of taskmaster is his uh, arch enemy Biff, who is working with Starscream. So um, that's kind of how things end. Uh, Marty tries to escape um, and, and fights back against Starscream and kind of wheels out on his skateboard and is being chased when all of a sudden the DeLorean warps back 
and uh, and Marty's like, Doc Brown, am I so glad to see you? But then suddenly the DeLorean transforms, and it is now a transformer. And he's like, I've been looking for you. There's an emergency. We got to go. And that's how the issue ends. So um, kind of cool. I really like the uh, this type of crossover. They can pretty much wake, make anything work if they want, really, right? And uh, it's just like in the Ghostbusters one when they made Ecto-1 a Transformer uh, that made into its own robot. They've done the same with the DeLorean and, and it's, uh, it's awesome, you know. And you can see it coming maybe, but it's still awesome. <laughs> so um, next up in the regular ongoing Transformers series, we have issue number 23. This is in the Rise of the Decepticons uh, uh, storyline and... It immediately picks up from the last issue, and uh, the Senate is about to convene without the Ascenticons and Megatron and all those guys present, all the robots that are causing so much trouble. And so Optimus Prime, or Orion Pax, I guess, is, uh, you know, spreading his forces around the Senate building, inside the Senate building, to, to make sure everything is safe. But uh, they fear something's going to happen, because there's so many Transformers at inside and around the building and and they can feel tensions boiling over with all the stuff that's been going on and uh and they're all quite worried and stuff and and making it worse is there's this news robot outside who is you know fanning the flames uh, and making things even worse uh in terms of the news coverage and getting people riled up in the end megatron ratbat and strika end up sauntering into the senate building and saying oh care for some uninvited guests and uh orion pax is like well if we don't allow them in we'll be no better than they are so they allow megatron in he rises to the podium gives this long-winded speech against the senate against the autobots and uh and it all culminates when he says something 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 now and the now is a command and at that time all of his forces that are hidden around the senate building begin to descend and start attacking the guards and this is kind of the rise of the Decepticons finally being put into action. And, uh, and uh, that's kind of where it ends, as all these guards and, 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 uh, and stuff are being taken out by these hidden forces. And uh, so it kind of leaves us on a cliff, cliffhanger again as to you know, what exactly is going to happen in the next issue. Next up, issues 9. And issues 10 of the Transformers Galaxies kind of sub plot, sub line. Um, in the first one, number nine, it kind of concludes the storyline of Gage, uh, the, the, the young Transformer that got caught by the reversionists in that ship and then they imprisoned RC and Greenlight and she eventually freed them right at the end of the last issue. So as they're watching from out the window of the ship, they realize they're actually, the ship's actually headed back to Cybertron and uh, Heretech, the leader of the reversionists, has this plan to uh, use Gage as part of it to expose an Energon vein in Cybertron's surface and blow up the Cybertron and, and all the, the the Transformers on it that don't want to join the Reversionists on their crusade. So it's kind of this, um, you know, religious sect of crazies that are like, if you're not with us, uh, you're not one of us and you're going to die, right? So then Gage has to like... Um, play it cool and kind of like be like yeah i'm still a reversionist and stuff like that and i'll play your game meanwhile rc and Greenlight have escaped to the surface of cybertron and they're trying to warn everybody about what's coming and stuff and uh so it all kind of culminates when when gage and everybody and all the reversionists reach cybertron and uh gage is is still going through the motions until at the last second she kind of turns on the heretic and uh and makes this impassioned speech to Cybertron about, you know, these people are crazy. I believe everybody should be able to do whatever they want. Everybody should live in peace. So then the Heretech gets enraged and starts to attack her. RC and Greenlight intervene. So then there's this kind of final battle to bring down Heretech and send the reversionists packing. And uh, which, once it's done, kind of leaves an open future for Gage and Greenlight and RC as they settle back on Cybertron and look towards a brighter, less violent type of future. So. So, that leads us into the next uh, storyline, which is called Storm Horizon Part 1. It focuses on Ultra Magnus, and it starts off with a brief cutscene of uh, 
from from however long ago when when Ultra Magnus is on his own and he's in the middle of some sort of frantic battle where he's just grossly outnumbered and uh but he's ripping people apart he's a fierce warrior and uh he's kind of saved at the last minute when megatron intervenes and, and helps him out and it's funny because megatron's like ultra magnus you know like this isn't the way you you shouldn't just fight for the sake of fighting and you should you know seek a peaceful re resolution when you can and, and ultra magnus is just like yeah you know war is war war is great i'm gonna win that sort of thing so it's funny to see this opposite side of megatron before he kind of went crazy right and and uh, became so violent and uh, anti-authoritarian or whatever he is. So um, then it warps ahead to the current time, and Ultra Magnus is a part of the uh, Cybertron Expe Expeditionary Force. So it's him, Chrome Dome, and a couple of other Transformers, uh, science guys, other than Ultra Magnus, that are kind of out in the universe exploring things. And uh, they just finished clearing up these uh, this hive of silicone worms that are on this planet. And uh, after this adventure, he gets back to the ship and realizes he has a private communication from Cybertron. It's from Jazz, and Jazz is like, Alpha Trion's gone missing. Uh, Alpha Trion is like a, a wizened old Transformer who has much knowledge and wisdom, and who's actually, I think he's, he's in the process of seeking out some ancient Cybertronian artifacts or something like that. So Ultra Magnus is like uh, friends with Alpha Trion. He's like, well... I know we have this mission, but we have to find him. So him and his cronies set off to find Alpha Trion. They, they track him to this planet, and as they land on the planet and set out to explore, they kind of feel as though they're being led into a trap. So Ultra Magnus sends his uh, science guys back to the ship and continues on foot alone and, uh, and eventually is led into a trap. Um, Spinister, uh, a, a devious fellow, uh, kind of confronts Ultra Magnus and says, Oh, 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 don't, don't kill me yet. We've been to your ship. We've got your buddies. We've we've blasted them. We now have them captive. I want you to do what I want you to do, and then you'll get your boys back. So Ultra Magnus is like, "What the hell do you want?" He's and Spinister's like, "Well, I am also looking for uh, Alpha Trion, and uh, I have my own interest in these ancient Cybertronian artifacts, and uh, so maybe we can work together and uh, and work towards the same goal." So Ultra Magnus, being the guy he is, can't let his crew that he was responsible for be destroyed by this spinister and 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 uh and whatnot so he's like okay we'll work together and that's kind of how it ends on this cliffhanger so um the these two working together to find alpha trion but we obviously know that spinister's motives are sinister and ultra magnus's motives are complete the opposite so we know that they're going to work together but at some point something's going to happen right so Anyways, so that's the latest batch of comics. It was very Transformers heavy. Um, the only other regular issue that was in there besides the Transformers uh, entry was was the tur the one Turtles issue. So no GI Joe this month so far. Um, um, just very very Transformers heavy, which I won't complain about. I love the Transformers, but uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what next month is gonna bring because I got to expect there's gonna be at least a couple GI Joes in there and maybe another couple Turtles. But uh, but uh, that's half the fun is. It, because I subscribe to all these books, and they're like, okay, put in his G.I. Joe, put in his Turtles, put in his Transformers. But it's all these side issues when they do these crossovers and stuff like that. You never know. You know you're going to get your regular ones, but you never know what the extras are going to be, right? So I always love going in, and they hand me my stack, and I'm like, okay, just standard stuff. Or it's like, ooh, look at this new thing, right? So it's always fun and exciting to see what you get. And, uh, and, uh, and then, uh, of course, read them. So um, that is all for this month. I will get my latest batch uh, not long after November begins, and I will be back in about another month to report on those. So till then, stay warm, safe, cool, whatever you like. So long.